Hello everyone, welcome back to United Brothers. My name is Robert. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is going to be a little bit of a different video than what you're used to from us. So this is actually my 2006 Subaru WRX. About a month ago I threw a check engine light. Well when I got the code reader out, it turned out to be Subaru Trouble Code P2443. So for any of you that are watching this video to see how we fix that, well stay tuned because I'm going to show you. So anyway guys, without further delay, let's get started. Alright guys, let's jump right into this. So in order to get to our valve, we need to remove the intercooler first. So to remove the intercooler, you'll need a 12mm socket, a 10mm socket, and in my case an Allen wrench, along with a flathead or Phillips head screwdriver. You'll also need a pair of pliers at some point for some of the hose clamps. To remove the intercooler, I'll start by removing the two 12mm bolts from the sides of it. Next, we'll use our Allen wrench to remove the two bolts from the blow-off valve. Next, we'll use our 10mm socket to remove the two bolts from the front of the intercooler. And with those out of the way, we can go ahead and gently remove the tubing by sliding the three hoses off of it. Next we'll go ahead and loosen this clamp with our screwdriver. And while we're at it, we'll loosen this one as well right below the intercooler. Next we are now ready to remove the intercooler. Gently move the part around to free it. Make sure while you're removing it to slide it towards the right. and it's off. And with the intercooler off of the vehicle, we now have access to our secondary air valve, which is responsible for our trouble code. Next, we'll go ahead and unplug the sensor cable. Then we'll go ahead and remove the two 10 millimeter bolts on the side of the valve. Due to the cramped spaces, I highly recommend some small wrenches. And this part can be a slow process. Next, with a pair of pliers, remove the hose from the valve. Now with the hose removed, we can access the two 10mm bolts that sit below the nozzle where we had just removed the hose from. Next, this one's a little tricky to see, but there is a 12mm bolt we need to remove that holds a bracket to the car our valve's attached to. This one may take a bit, so patience is key. And with that last bolt removed, our bad valve is free from the car. Now the valve won't just pull straight out. Make sure to gently pull pierce it out with a twist motion. And it's out. Let's see why this valve has gone bad. 
Before we examine the valve, we need to remove one more 10mm bolt that holds the bracket to the valve. So if you're wondering why these secondary air valves are so prone to failure, it's because condensation over time can build in these valves, causing them to eventually seize up. This can result in the valve inside sticking in the open or closed position, which will then give a trouble code that will trip the car's check engine light. Unfortunately, these valves are not something you can just ignore. Some of the symptoms to your car can be a poor or rough idle, and hesitation when accelerating. And when these go bad, these will not only trip your car's check engine light, but they will also trigger your cruise light to flash. This means that while these trouble codes are present, you will also not be able to use your car's cruise control. Now there are other alternatives other than replacing these, but it involves tuning your car. But if you live in a smog enforced part of the world, then these will have to be replaced in order for you to pass inspection. For the valve in particular that we are replacing, the Subaru part number is 14864AA020. Now these valves are not cheap. This one cost me 385 US dollars. After a quick visual inspection to make sure the parts match, it's time to put the new valve in the car. Before you put the valve back in the car, make sure to bolt the bracket to your new valve. And with your bracket attached, gently lower the new valve into place. And with that said, just repeat everything you did earlier when installing your new valve. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope this helped you guys out. If you'd like to keep up to date on all of our latest videos, please consider clicking the subscribe button. And also make sure to tap the bell so you get notified when we upload a new video. So until next time guys, I'm Robert, and I will see you guys again soon. So, doing it again? Tip? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Oh, there she is. God, when you come out of those full pass just because the sun's in the way, oh, yeah. you'll like lose it for a second. Oh, just lost it, there we go. It's pretty much easier with that camera. It is. I'm just also getting used to how much faster the zoom and all that stuff is on this thing. 30 seconds, okay. One more pass. Oh God. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> you gonna land her? I think it actually glides pretty well, you can just dead stick it in.